So I wanted to respond to uh, Jeremy, aka the Pathless Path, on an excellent video he did uh, on uh, the idea of development in progress uh, in evolution, specifically when it comes to consciousness. Uh, he's talking about specifically in uh, in the area of people like uh, Teilhard de Chardin or uh, Jean Gebser or um, Ashri Arbendo and or more most famously Ken Wilber. Uh, and I'll say this about Ken Wilber. I, I think he tends to be more careful in his writing than he is when he's speaking. Uh, and uh, his, also his earlier work in transpersonal psychology, I think, is a lot more nuanced and insightful than his later theory of everything kind of stuff. And over time, he t he's kind of become more of a caricature of himself. Um, but anyway, in, in terms of the development of consciousness and ideas like spiral dynamics, I think the problem with that view uh, with, with uh, the internal movement in it as approach to consciousness is that it tends to be too individualistic. Uh, specifically, the, the fact that they're coming from this kind of spiritual uh, place, and I'm talking about spiritual development or spiritual evolution, um, is often it, it makes make for good marketing when they're trying to sell you on their seminars and, uh, and talks about, uh, about how you can be a spiritual evolutionary. And so because that, I think I think, I think it's because of that individualistic view that uh, Ken Wilber says that uh, it's a mystery why uh, consciousness evolved, what, why people go to another stage of consciousness. Um, I agree that uh, despite the protests to the contrary, I think it does tend to be Western-centric and uh, Im uh, implicitly modernist, um, which is why it tends to... Uh, be similar to uh, to the things that modernist thinkers like Steven Pinker say, who I think represents some of the worst of modernist thinking uh, that I can think of. Um, and it also has some very uncomfortable imperialistic connotations. It doesn't ne doesn't necessarily have to, but a lot of people take in that direction. I think I uh, stopped listening to the Daily Evolver series on Integral Life when I heard uh, Jeff Saltzman. Uh, talk about the war in Libya and basically talk about Libya being conquered by a greater level of consciousness and I yeah that that has very dark and scary implications for me that I just couldn't continue to listen to or support um, so I, I think what the integral people tend to miss is that consciousness develops socially we, we are social creatures and we uh, you know we end up talking to each other. We, we, we come in contact with each other. Sometimes we clash with each other. Uh, but basically, you know, each culture sort of develops its own kind of semiotic systems, systems of interpretation. Uh, and, uh, and, and as they come in contact with other cultures, they converse. There's a meshing and coming come together. And there's also a tension. And I think the tension between the different worldviews creates a kind of novelty. I, I think that that's, that's basically how novelty and emergence has to happen in general, is that through this dialectical tension. I know, I know you tend to um, downplay uh, the importance of dialectic, but I think it, I think it is dialectic. It's not, it's not linear, but, it, but it's dialectic. And, di and by dialectic, I simply mean that there's differences of intensity uh, that, um, uh, that form tension with each other, and through the, the t that tension, it, it creates a higher synthesis. Um, and I've found this even on individual uh, individual level um, that I think my own consciousness has developed as I've read more philosophers and conversed with many different types of people, uh, you know, and um, encounter these different worldviews. And so, you know, I think it's cumulative, and it's also and also through the accumulation of these different ideas, you know, I sit with the tension between those ideas, and then through that from the synthesis, which I, which I call my own ideas. Um, and and as I think also, I also agree that there's a problem with the whole transcend and include thing. I, I don't even think it's necessarily wrong per se, but it tends to gloss over uh, the sort of losses that, that happen along the way. Um, transcend and include implies that the sort of previous stages um, are sort of preserved, untouched within the larger um, circle of, uh, of, of emergence. Um, and uh, I think there's a problem with that. I think that um, some things are genuinely lost along the way. Um, 
and uh, there may be the seeds of, of former uh, semiotic systems, systems of, of meaning uh, that occur, that remain and persist within the sort of modern consciousness, but they are changed by that modern consciousness in terms of their expression. And so, you know, um, and so I, th I think that uh, primitivists are, you know, I, they're, they're, I, I, don't, I don't agree with uh, like anarcho-primitivism that, uh, which I've, I've met quite a few of those people who, who just want to go back to uh, the Neolithic or to the Paleolithic and like, relive uh, the sort of lifestyle that, that, that people had back then. And there's a kind of romanticizing of uh, the, that, um, of how people used to live back then. And a lot of uh, the sort of quasi modernist thinking that pervades a lot of integral, uh, a lot of the integral community, um, tends to would, would probably tend to see that as pure wishful thinking. And yeah, you know, why would and, and there's no real reason why anyone should want to go back to that. And I think that's bullshit. I think there there's a lot to admire in uh, these tribal societies. Um, and for me, for me, since I've become an anarchist, I've been talking a lot more about that stuff, about how, about these sort of um, non-hierarchical community they have, or at least, I mean, to the extent there is hi hierarchy, it's not coercive or institutionalized in the way that a state apparatus does. And I mean, like, a parent-child uh, parent uh, relationship is obviously going to be hierarchical, but it's not so the kind of coercive hierarchy that uh, you get with a state apparatus, with the police and uh, prisons and stuff. And when I talk about that, some people have the reaction, well, why don't you go just live among these primitive tribes? But the point is that uh, they have something that's worth preserving, uh, and I think it, it's, it, it needs to be synthesized with the benefits the modernity has brought us. And I think that what uh, modernity has brought is to bring pe people together in this larger, into this larger system. Um, you know, the, these sort of primitive um, tribal societies uh, had a lot of internal solidarity be between between their members, and, um, and and I think that's, that's very admirable. But there's also a lot of conflict with outsiders, uh, and. Often, I mean, you'll see this today among certain tribes in like Papua New Guinea or you know remote places, where like any one from an outside tribe can be killed with impunity. Like they're they're not they're not within your sphere of moral consideration. I think modernity has helped change that, but at the same time, uh, the downside of it is that it has kind of objectified social relations through money, through hierarchy, through bureaucracy. People don't meet each other. On the real personal level that they do in these alternative societies, uh, uh, it, as Jurgen Habermas might, might say, uh, it tends to colonize the life world. And so, um, you know, wh what I what I would seek to do is actually kind of decolonize the life world within a civilized society and bring back some of what was lost from these more um, more primitive uh, tribal societies into uh, the modern world and uh, see how you can create a greater synthesi a synthesis um, uh, with these ideas. So in closing, I think what I would say is I think that progress is possible, uh, but it's not inevitable. And we have to really be mindful of uh, when we're truly being integrative versus when we're just being imperialistic. And I think that there's a lot of um, people within the integral com uh, community that tend to lose sight of that distinction. Um, and so I think a, a pure approach involves not pigeonholing people into different stages of consciousness, but involves a genuine, inst a genuine attempt to um, understand their worldview and their system of interpretation. So I'll leave it there for now. Peace.